the Bible is an idol. Now today I want to give you the big picture. Get the big picture. If you get the big picture, the big vision, it took me years to put it all together. It's like a puzzle, really, what's happened in the spiritual world. And so if you get this big picture, now I want you to be able to see, you know like when they show on maybe the Weather Channel or something, they'll show a picture of the whole earth, a big blue marble, they call it, sitting out there. And it just goes around the sun, you know, and it's hung out there in space. See that, see that whole world. And then you'll understand why it would say in Genesis, um, first said, the morning and the evening of the first day. See, they couldn't answer that at the monkey trials because they had Bible worshipers. But God can see the whole world like that. He sees the morning and then he sees the evening at the same time. <laughs> we can't see that much. But get the big vision. Get a vision like God sees the world. He walks on the circles of the earth. So get this vision now. And follow me, and then follow me to the end. I'll show you a little bit about end time. All right? Now, he asked Job, he said, Job, where was you when I laid the foundations of the world? Now, God's a spirit, and he had angels, and, and he, he laid the foundations of the world up there and made it. Now, people say there's other, other worlds. We know there's other planets and things. I don't have life on them. I've had visions and things, but uh, he, it could be. If he can make one, he can make two, right? So he made this one, we know, he showed me. And so get that big picture. Now let's go. What did God do? He said, I've got angels. I want some people in flesh houses living on this earth, worshiping me. And so he went down there and made up Adam. Adam didn't have no uh, belly button, you know. He didn't have no umbilical cord. He's the only one that didn't, and him and Eve. So in the truth, you see, he wanted these people to worship him. But his son, seeing what he'd done, his son Lucifer, he said, I want to rule the earth. God said, no, Adam is going to rule the earth. Adam was a son of God. God made him. He made Lucifer. He made, he's the father of spirits. He made all spirits. All right? Lucifer come down, and he give uh, Eve and, and Adam both a lethal injection. He filled them with poison, put them over into the flesh. You'll be as gods. You see, you can have babies. They wanted to have, recreate yourself. They had babies, Cain and Abel and all. Okay. The father started a battle. Now, you go from the beginning. Let's go through it real quick. The father started a battle. I'll put enmity between your seed and the woman's seed. So God started fighting for the ones that wanted him. We're coming back to him, you know, instead of uh, leaving him. So we'll go back to God. So he called Abraham. He Well, Noah got us over the flood. Abraham was his seed. In Isaac would the seed be called, and they got in trouble and got in, in bondage down in Egypt looking for corn. And Moses means drawed out of the water. He brought forth Moses. Moses led him out through the desert. Joshua took him in across the Jordan. And they had judges. They had uh, the prophets. They had the kings, King David and Hezekiah and all of them. And so that was to bring forth another son, which was with him when he made the world. Jesus seen the big world down there before he ever came down to it. And Jesus said, I'll go down and get those children. Get this picture now. See the big world. Jesus said, I'm seeing the big world. All the sons of God could see it. Their spirit in heaven. Okay, Jesus said, I'll go down and get Adam's seed. I'll adopt them into my kingdom. Jesus has got angels. So he said, I'll go down there and go through the flesh and I'll uh, redeem them. Okay, by my blood, I'll make a sacrifice for them and uh, become the resurrection and you can send back the Holy Ghost and they'll be my seed. I'll be born of your spirit in the Holy Ghost in a virgin. So I want you to see that. So here comes Jesus, baby in the manger, you know. And then he grew up, nobody wanted him on earth and that's the way it is. They want Satan, they want the flesh, they want the things. So the Jews didn't want uh, the Romans to come in and take over their country so they was pleasing Caesar by killing Jesus, all right? Now, when Jesus raised from the dead, the apostles went out. Their sound went into all the world. They preached the gospel with the Holy Ghost. John and Peter were ignorant and unlearned men. They couldn't even read and write, but they had the Holy Ghost. And that's all it took to preach the gospel. All right. They went out, and soon their days was over. And you go on through Constantine getting up the 50 Bibles out of fine Balaam, and you get uh, King James uh, authorizing the Bible. And before you know it, you've got a whole world full of 
a Bible worshipers. You got two billion, two hundred million Bible worshipers. Now follow this. As they developed, see, you'll never get rid of Bible worshipers because they build on the Bible. Now the Bible is two things. It's an idol, but it's also the history. So you can't do away with the history. That's the history of the church. All right. I'm trying to do away with the idol part of it. The Bible's an idol. It's the mark of the beast. Uh, Constantine's the first beast, King James II. So Satan brought them all under his power in religion, you see. They have these games they play on Sunday. They pretend like they're Christians, but they're not. They're not Christians. They're just Bible worshipers. All right, now listen to me very careful on this. Now, God sent back the Holy Ghost, and Jesus said it's finished. All right, the apostles preached. The Holy Ghost was in the land, and the people chose a Bible instead of the Holy Ghost. You see what they've done? It's two billion people chose Bibles instead, and the rest of them chose Korans and things. So they don't want the Holy Ghost. It interferes with their flesh life. All right, now watch as it comes on into our time. After the, the Industrial Revolution now, we've got atom bombs, we've got cars running everywhere, trains. This would be amazing to the people who lived back in Jesus' day. They wouldn't know what a Rolex watch was or anything. Because this thing has really developed. Now think about this. There's 7 billion people on this earth today. Can you see that big blue ball hanging out there? There's 7 billion people. And they don't even have enough fresh water. They're drilling. Do you know they're drilling wells in California now uh, 1,200 foot deep just to find water? There's a drought out there. Watch the things that man can't fix. That's where you'll have your troubles. They can this Ebola stuff and stuff. Satan is so intelligent, he'll get in these scientists and these doctors and he'll cure that kind of stuff. But watch for something that man can't fix and the devil can't fix that God does. Now, you're approaching end time. Because now what else can God do? God sent his son. Well, all right, from the beginning, he let Noah come over the flood. He called Abraham and uh, Jacob and them and then Moses sent them in there, David the kings, and the son came forth. And then you have all the apostles preaching and, and Jesus founded the everlasting covenant. The everlasting covenant. This is the covenant I'll make with you. This is the best there is. We have a king. We've been adopted by Jesus with, through the Holy Ghost. Now what else can he do? There's nothing else God can do. This is the everlasting covenant. Now there is, remember this, there is no more sacrifice for sins. God ain't going to do nothing else to forgive you of your sins because... The blood of Jesus is sufficient. The life that God gave us through Jesus, His Son, if the apostles could live it, if the people could live it in their days, we can, we can live it if we have to stay hid out and, and pray in the Holy Ghost. But we can do it. So God done, gave us His best. He gave us His Son that was with Him in the beginning, before the world was, before Abraham was, Jesus was. And He could see that big blue ball, and He went down on it and got in the flesh and saved us. Now that's the best that can be done. There's nothing else can think. There's nothing else can be done. Now, Jesus sent back the Holy Ghost. This is all we need. We've got God in us. He knows all the history. He was there when Moses was there. He was there when David was there. He's there. He knows everything. He can teach you everything. Okay. Now, there's no more sacrifice for sin. You, there's no, nothing else you can get. The big old blue ball now has been got holes dug in it, concrete laid all across it. They've destroyed this world. They've exploded atom bombs out in the ocean, killed all the fish. They've done all kinds of evil to this world. And it's populated, overpopulated, overpolluted. Now what else can be done? Nothing else. Now there's very few Holy Ghost people. We're the only ones teaching that you got to go by the Holy Ghost. Everybody else says, open your Bible. We say, close your Bible. Read it for the history book and then close it and get in the Holy Ghost. Because you can't be controlled by a Bible. Now where else can you go? What else can God do? And he's going to come soon because there's not very many of us left. There's only a few of us. Nobody knew the Bible was an idol till I came out and started preaching it. The Bible's the mark of the beast. So it's a few more years and it's over. Because God don't reap no fruit off the earth. If all the people that's dying, and most of them are, and I've watched a lot of them die, they're going to be with Lucifer. They chose Lucifer, you see. They're like Ananias of fire. They want the money. Okay. Now, this is an end-time message. If anybody comes after me, it'll be them two witnesses telling them they'll build that temple in Jerusalem. God don't want that thing rebuilt because that's the old covenant and it didn't work. That'd be a disgrace to his son if they built that again. So, listen close. This is an end-time message. And if you think about it and see the big picture, 
And you get the whole picture from when he created Adam on through all the things that he done and what's been done today and where we're at today. And you see all these people with their Bibles, you know they didn't follow God. They don't have the Holy Ghost because nobody's in contact with God. They don't have access to God with a book. I have access to God. He gives me some words and I put them on here for you so you can know. So get the big picture, be able to see it and see what God has done and see what he can do now. What else can he do? There's nothing else that he can do. He sent his son. He sent the Holy Ghost. That's it. It's over. There's nothing else he can do. And he's not reaping no fruit off the earth today. So pay attention. I'll be teaching more and more truth, deeper and deeper truth for you Holy Ghost people so you'll have deep understanding. Thank you, Jesus, for the big picture.